Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. I'm going to be investigating these Walkmen and these are three out of many that I have dotted around and basically I want to bring them back to speed. So I'm going to go through some of these first few. I'll just show you what they are before they kind of half go back in the box. Um, we've got a Toshiba one here with an AM FM radio. It's the RTP33. That's going to be coming up. And we're going to have a Sony WM2. Looks very exciting. Actually, it's kind of funky because it's got this hole that goes through it, which is kind of neat, isn't it? And of course, nice Walkman logo. But today's video is going to be on this one, which is the Awa HS T06. And you can see it is suffering a little bit from a, should we call it metalwork malfunction? But that's just a bit of glue. But we really first want to make sure that it actually plays. And we have a selection of belts here as well in case we need some belts. So we're going to just jump in and go straight inside this unit. Now the first thing you want to do before you hack into anything of course is test it to make sure it does or does not work. And uh, We've got an audio tape here I found. It's a ditto two cassette pack of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. And I presume this would have originally come with a book, uh, but alas, the book is no longer with it. So, so far so bad. Although there is a battery light on there, interestingly. Which kind of makes you wonder, is there an on-off switch on this thing? I mean, it's got a lot of functions because it does the play, for example, if you have a look, it seems to play in both directions. So that is quite a funky feature if it works on here. So let's have a look. Let's get a tape in there first. I think we need to get the tape in. Bit, bit grimy, bit grotty. Tape is in. Nothing going. Uh, might be on radio mode too. You've got to remember some of these with the radio. When the radio is activated, of course, the tape's not going to be doing anything. So I do have my pot noodle speaker. Could be radio. And it was. AM, believe it or not, so I'm going to push that to off. Oh, so it's dual purpose. It actually has Dolby NR uh, and then an off, but that's also the FM AM selector. So it's a dual purpose whether it's in tape mode or not. And then on the top here that I've just seen that radio tape, so we'll slide that over to tape. And the tape is a spinning. Look at that. <laughs> Seems a little bit on the slow side. That's almost horrifying, isn't it? <laughs> that direction change is amazing, actually. Right. It almost sounds as I'm going forward and backwards, that the sand is getting better. Let's just try one thing. I'm just going to rewind the tape. Let's just see. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Because maybe there's you know, an issue with the tape. The tape's not been played for a while. Forward it a bit. Backwards it a bit. Oh, that didn't need to come off. So many little screws. All the screws are removed. And there was a bit of a scary moment there because it kind of all just was tugging on this thing and it just went, as you can imagine. Uh, there were a few screws I didn't need to undo. Um, but the bit I should have done is remove these little doodads. So have a quick look. They're so tiny. If you're doing it, make sure you pop off those slider covers first from their appropriate place. Because if you don't, They'll ping all over the place like mine did, and then you kind of have a bit of a blind panic. I also undid the screws at the hinges of the door, but they were unnecessary. And there seems to be some sort of weird juicy residue in here, which is kind of a bit worrying. I don't know, it might, I think it's battery, um, 
battery source so be careful of that now instantly I can see in there there's a couple of belts so there's one belt here it's running that way but there's also another belt which is horribly horribly behind everything else I'm just gonna have a little feel of that and yes it's definitely a belt in there so I don't know whether or not I'm gonna to need to get at that and what I need to do to get at that but let's gently probe again I'm kind of wiping things I go down there's just a lot of that horrible liquid in here and uh, I don't know what it is be careful of this side as well because the tuner and look that's your little tuner indicator and there's your antenna with the little copper wire so you don't really want to bust it up although realistically I don't know how much AM you're going to be listening to so that just pops off like that that was too easy makes you wonder what actually holds it on in practice and there I can see it's my treasure oh crikey even these are all coming on loose Let's be very gentle, get those out. <laughs> and then slam them to the bench. I still haven't located my old tweezers, my good old, dear old, dear old tweezers, so I may have to buy a new pair. The whole thing just wants to delaminate itself now. So the real challenge is um, one whether or not I actually have the appropriate belts in this kit and I think I do because I can see there's very small ones here but two how to get at this inner one so I think the thing I'm going to focus on right now is the inner one because the outer one here is easy mm. and I guess those of you at home are probably saying well why don't you replace the outer one maybe you don't need to replace the inner one and that's a very good point I mean looking at this that inner one you can see there as I move it actually goes over that wheel there and that wheel there so it's driving it's driving both of the um, these wheels which I guess are clutched into the uh, tape I think are these called capstans the tape capstans when you engage the appropriate direction switch so I think that's all that's doing um, but it does look, unless unless you're very lucky and, and can prise off this board slightly, that there's no chance of getting to that. So we just have a look at this PCB just in case. You never know. There might be a way of just lifting it up. If you can, we're in we're in like Flynn, as uh, some other famous YouTubers have said. I'm just trying to see if the old battery contact can come up because that's going to be key to this. And if not you could always desolder it but I'm, I'm keen just to see if I can lift it out. And uh, I'm not so worried about sliding it around on this face because we don't have the front on but if you uh, if it's your Walkman and you do have the front on it, there we go, uh, make sure it's adequately cushioned. Nothing worse than scratching your prized possession, especially as they're quite hard to get hold of these days, aren't they? So let's look at this. I've loosened a few screws and it's still pretty tenacious to be honest with you. It doesn't kind of want to come off, but I can get a bit of flex. So I feel, and hopefully I'm not wrong on this, <laughs> that we have enough to go on so I'm gonna to try to get the belt off ah, ha, ha. and we have the belt off indeed and this other belt is pretty easy so now we have our two belt sizes we're gonna to try to look for so I'm quite excited about cutting into this so this was from Bitsa Electronics sensible priced UK electronics uh, we're not affiliated in any way however uh, you know Let's see if it turns out to be a good product, because if it does, crikey, then they deserve all the bits bought from Bits Electronics. <laughs> so I'm going to try to pick some kind of just arbitrarily, because I don't want to tip out the whole bag, but ooh, now, too big I think, that would be my, alright, let's just, I don't know how we're going to do this. Ooh. 
So I think that's the same size. And if that's the same size, then these are probably all the same size. Yes, so we want to go smaller. Nope. <laughs> yeah. So that one is the next size down. And I'm just going to put them on my little fingers here. Yeah, I'd say they're comparable really. One's a looser version than the other, so that'll probably do for that one. Then we have this one, which is quite a bit smaller in you know, gauge, really, I want to say. Um, oh, careful now. I'm guessing these are... Yeah, that's it. I don't want to mess these up too much. Let's see if there's any possibility for me getting these back in the little pack before uh, we move on. And if that works, then that's what you shall do when you buy yours. Yes, that does work. Boom. Back in the pack. Safe. Your baby is safe. Just as a quick test, we can test this easy one right now where we're going to have to take it off again. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. Almost makes me wonder if it's too loose. Maybe I need a smaller one. But anyway, let's see if we can get this one in. That's the tricky, the tricky guy. Hey, you're a tricky guy. You think you're going to outsmart me? Then you're probably right. You are probably right, my friend. So the tricky part is, you've got to get it around this main roller. Once it's around that guy, I'm pretty sure we're going to be kind of plain, plainish sailing. Oh, okay, we're almost there. It's gone a bit too far in the workings. But... Hooray, that's going all right. And then... Actually, what it was, it was just wrapped around the right little roller thing. Maybe that's the capstan. Is a capstan a thing that you just wrap something around, perhaps? Oh, close. And there's just a car, little copper bar in there. You'll see it there. Just that little copper bar in there. It had to sit underneath. Bing! Which it has done now. Oh, it's come off the roller. Not a good sign. Give it a twist. Give it a... Oh, I can see why. Mm, yeah, it's not on that roller. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that in the background as well, the sound of a million things falling over. I'm in the process of trying to sort out the back office and there's all these boxes. I don't know if you've uh, ever done that where you've got a million boxes all lying around and they're kind of waiting to be homed um, but in the meantime you've basically got them wherever they can sit and uh, every now and then we'll have a, a box quake and we'll lose a bunch of those. And I'll have to go pay the price to the box gods later. So this is ever so tricky. Again, you need something probably so proper tiny, proper flat and tiny would do. Like a like a higher quality tweezers, perhaps. Yes! Ah, we've done it. And we're done. Look at that. That's it. So we've got that one going. We've just got to find our new one of these, which was this one, hopefully. Again, that one seems a bit, meh, a bit loose. Right, we'll try to get a tape in. I love how crunchy everything is now. Nothing's quite aligned anymore. Get our headphone socket in. Or phones, as they used to say back in the day. Batteries. Now we're ready to cook. No. 
Oh, bum. We can look at that battery connector. Is that one I took out but then kind of forgot to put back in properly? Yeah, I think so. It's looking decidedly unhappy now. Don't worry, I'll get it. I'll sort you. It's a bit softer than a paper clip though, so you've got uh, plenty of motion in that. Oh. Got the tighter belt on. It's interestingly not done anything. I don't have to watch. Feeling very glad it was all over at last. The griffin turned to Alice and said, Come. So I think he, I don't know. I feel it probably isn't a belt tension issue, but I'm going to have to have a little think about this. Let me go scratch my head and uh, we'll reconvene in a moment. Nearly always, Colin answered. If I go out, People stare at me and I can't stand it. If you don't like people to see you, shall I go away? Mary asked. Oh no, Colin answered quickly. Stay and talk to me. So just to let you know what I've done, I've applied some silicone lubricant to everything I could find, all of the bits, and it did seem to speed it up slightly. So then I went through and changed all of the belts I had with one size smaller, which I'm not particularly keen on, but realistically, you're not going to be getting much use out of these anyway, so you're not going to wear out the bearings too much. So listen to where it is. This is how it sounds now. Turn it, said the mock turtle with a sigh. I only took the regular calls. What was that? inquired Alice. You can see there's a bit of a buzz that like I'm trying to get rid of. Writhing, of course, to begin with. So you can see that speed. Now listen what happens when I apply a little bit more voltage to the motor. The different branches Three. of arithmetic, ambition, distraction, ugly. So it starts to sound a lot better, so I can adjust that. Oh, that's enough about lessons, said the griffin. Let's have a song and dance. And I think that sounds a lot better. So, the answer to that would be is how to actually get more voltage into the motor from the circuit. So I'm going to have a look and see if there's ways you can tweak that. Because maybe all it needs is a little bit of tweakage. And we can uh, get this sounding okay. Good enough. Um, interestingly, you can see the motor still running. That's because it's running off the external power supply, even though this is all turned off. Interestingly, I've tried a different tape, which seems to be putting some tension on some other part of this mechanism, because it's got enough uh, go in it to actually activate the changer that does the automatic, uh, you know, side two flip over. You can see that doing that but not enough to play the tape although it will reverse and fast forward I've decided to delve deeper here <clears throat> just realize I almost pulled that wire off that I didn't want to um, so that I can uh, really get a look at these mecha mechanicals I've got a a music CD, <laughs> music CD, music tape in there, and it really highlights, you know, because it's. I think you're a little bit more sensitive to music than the spoken word, so I think that might be. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Oh, and look, there is an adjuster there. I wonder if that's a speed adjuster. So as long as we're not too you know, critical with this. I don't want to disturb anything with a tuner, for example. So this this thing here, that you can see just out of shot, is the tuner. 
and that's got set to a gauge on the front so you don't want to mess those two apart too much. So we're going to hook it up to some auxiliary power of course because we're not going to be able to get power to this otherwise. So I'm going to put the old solder iron on. I'm just going to tack here on the positive and negative a couple of wires. And at least that'll stop the old batteries popping out every two seconds. We're certainly getting a little bit more involved than I expected. But I'm thinking it's all going to be down to some lubrication. That's my gut feeling because although I... Uh, did the trick of applying a little bit more voltage to the motor. When I changed different tapes, they all had a different pitch going on. So it's probably down to whether or not you've got one of those long play audio tapes versus one of the ones, you know, kiddie single. And then the problem with that is that it's always going to be wrong, basically. You're just you're relying on the wrong kind of force to get that going. I'm going to flip it all this way. So I've got a tape in there. Power supply is on. I'm going to set that to about 3 volts. So you can see it running now, it's all, it's weird, it looks like it's all palpitating away. And I'm just going to spray this into a, a top of a cup here. And then I will suck that up in my little syringe so we don't lose any. Got it. So you've got the option with the old silicone, you can uh, just get a little brush if you want and try brushing it wherever you think it might be beneficial. Which is probably, to be fair, the best way. And you can see there's a lot of little moving circuits. Look at these little doodads. So these things that are wobbling around there, I think they're part of the uh, auto flip mechanism. And then you've got all these little springs, look at that, with all their dirty old grease. Do have a little bit of rejuvenating. And all of these metal surfaces actually slide over each other. They're all part of the mechanism. So you've got plenty of stuff that's potentially going to go wrong. So I'm just going to try apply some drops, basically. Oh my gosh, about 500 came out. Got to be careful. Be more careful. Because you don't really want them going on somewhere you don't want it to go, like the belts. Shout. Noddy! Noddy! Bit of Noddy. I was playing around and I did find a speed control. Actually, it was one of these little pots here. In fact, it's this one. And I managed to tune that and got it right. But it stopped working. And not the whole circuit, just the motor drive circuit. So I'm going to test the motor now. I do hope it's not the motor. Because the. Uh, Everything else works great, the radio and all of that's fine. So I'm just going to take my probes off and just check they are off and I'm going to solder those directly to the motor. Who would have thought these could be so interesting? And what's kind of fun, I know stuff's working because if I turn the tape by hand, I can kind of hear a sound. So there is, um, it's almost as if it's the mechanism. So I've got the motor connected, but there's no, I've taken the belt off. I don't want any strain. Going to set the power. We decided last time the voltage to the motor seems to be about half that of the system. So run at 1.3. Oh, that was running all right, wasn't it? That was happy as Larry. See what that looks like with a belt on it. Go, doctor! That's all you can say sometimes. Right. Yeah, that's looking happy. It almost makes me want to power this up. Let's see how we can do this. <laughs> 
So we've got the motor being driven separately from the main system now. So pants. I could get out another set of probes, couldn't I? That would be far too easy. Dull. No copyright music. Now I can't. I just want to wonder if I can rewind and stuff. You can. <laughs> Sounds a bit like shaft there. Hmm. Good. So I think we're honing in on something now. We're honing in on a, a weirdness. So it seems I'm going to attach these back to where I had. So it seems part of the circuit that deals with the voltage to the motor was probably on its way out because we've pl as we are playing with it, it's just gone. No, uh, no. found by the villagers, for when their own lives and dwellings were threatened, they had no mercy. So, despite the poor girl's pitiful cries for mercy, they dragged her from the village to where a wooden post had been planted. <laughs> to be doing something now so I think it's time to put it all back together so it just all I did really was just touch up some of the contacts around here where it was a bit scuzzy and it seemed to improve it that allowed me to adjust that little trim pot and the rest is history I think it's probably about enough just enough working on this because the chances of breaking it increase exponentially the longer I spend messing around with it. So I've turned off the soldering iron. Let's see if I can reassemble this just as good as it was in the factory. And hopefully it's good enough. I mean, it's definitely better and good enough to show that it works. Whether or not you're listening to some high fidelity tunes is another thing, but they weren't ever really used for that, I don't think. They weren't, I don't know, it's, it's hard to, to know now. I'm gonna have to dig out the uh, Walkman that Dutch Retro Gamer sent me because that looked like a really good one. So if that one works, because it was a recorder as well, then the uh, chances are that could be my baseline, that's Sony. Right, so I've got all those bits back. Just got to make sure uh, everything is back the way it should be because there were gears. There were certainly gears going on here because of the way the radio tuner needle engage. So just be careful if you're doing one of these yourself because all this end is the end that's probably going to give you a bit of grief. I can see because I can see exactly now that the uh, the gear for the tuner isn't engaging. Ah, oh, there we go. Now it is perfect. Perfection. Just got to screw and solder my way back to happiness. Back to her penis. And just for future reference, you can actually adjust those from inside. Look. I think that's the speaker left volume, speaker right volume, and motor speed, all just there, without taking the cover off at all. Ay, 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 ay. Getting on the resin, get on the resin train.
Woo -hoo. So you're probably wondering why am I gonna bother resining this when I could probably just use some double-sided tape. Well, very good question. The answer is probably more obvious than you think. That's right. I don't have any double-sided tape that I would want to use on this. I've only got the low tack exhibition carpet tape and I, I don't know I feel this is going to be more permanent but you've only got one shot of this but to be fair if you've got a uh, tacky tape the chances are also with that pretty bad if you go wrong aren't they because it's going to warp it like hell so just looking here I want to try to just stick to these edges there which clearly line up with the edges here so that's what I'm going to do and uh, not go nuts on it I'm going to go two, two nuts, just a smear, just smear it on, look at that. I've made plenty too. Tick, tick, tick. Factory finish. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And then we're just going to get this and place it on <laughs> cautiously, more or less exactly where it needs to be. Da, 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 da. Perfect. All that's needed now is some sort of heavy bug car battery or something like that. And we'll leave it, see how it goes. It's been a few minutes, that should be long enough. Mmm, seems okay. Oh, had I known, I could have probably had that open and put some clothes pegs on that. Still, it's pretty good. You just pop in a tape and off you go. So there, that's how you uh, kind of get an AWA HST06 Walkman going. Uh, the radio works, the tape player works, the 4D backward -y. that's pretty sweet, that's really nice. And uh, I think that's quite special really, that's pretty rare. Have a look in the old Argos catalogue, <laughs> see how much there were. Uh, you got your stereo um, uh, and uh, AM tuner, so stereo FM and AM tuner. Stereo, mono, Dolby, NR, metal, normal, all the usual stuff. And uh, it says right there. Noise reduction system manufactured under license from Dolby Laboratories. Made, of course, in Japan. Please let me know if you've had one of these or what was your favourite Walkman and we're going to investigate some of the other ones in the future videos. As ever, thanks for watching.